Hey everyone, this is Manly Badass Hero, and welcome to Pit of Babel, a brutal and surreal puzzle game where you must build a tower that's inevitably going to collapse. Note that this game is created by the collaboration of two different developers, one of which made the game Perfect Vermin, and the other one made The Third Shift. Okay, so no real instructions in this game. I think we just kind of do stuff. Eat, buddy. Good for you. Oh, we birthed another one. Here. Hold left to pick up things up. Hold left, then hold right to rotate objects. It's like a pit over there. So that's a machine. Hey, wake up. Eat. I need more. Here. So, let's drop you in that. Uh. Whoops. Oh, it. So you drop them in and make some blocks. Maybe you can rotate it. You did not give me a friendly block to start off with. Okay. So feed them, birth new ones, no sleeping, into the grinder. Hmm. Okay, so you can rearrange them, thankfully. Helpful. Put you there. Put you there. Eat. I'm not sure if there's any advantage to, like, having him wait. Can I spawn multiple? Blocks and just have them all, like... Yeah, I can. So rather than just, like, have a, uh, a singular one at a time, I can just... Have a go at it. Here, I need some more. Good. Okay, we got some blocks to work with here. So we have this, we have that. I can either put you there, put you here. So, I'm getting this but Can we stack you anywhere? Does it happen? Does this have to be the constraints of the tower, or is this just a, a guideline to help me? Here, eat. Okay, no, this is a perfect block. Almost. Almost a perfect block right there. If it was just your direction. Here we go. Hey, give me some more. Interesting background I'm kind of looking at now. It's... It almost looks like a pile of people, right? Or something. Okay. Um, I'll take that for right now. And then... We'll do this. I'm curious what this orb is. Oh! You win when you get to that position. The tar and sand beneath me were only contrasted by the pale smoke that suffocated my vision. As I traveled deeper to the bottom of this pit of oily black sand, I felt a foreign confusion grow within me, and for a moment, I pondered escape. The soil was too loose to allow me the proper footing to climb out. The only direction this geography allowed was descent. Even then, the incline of the pit was far too sheer to allow me to move directly down without tumbling helplessly, so I descended slowly in this unfamiliar clockwise spiral. For a moment, I was filled with a peculiar nostalgia for this path I had never taken. I felt a mix of fear and excitement that was alien to my thoughts just moments ago. I noticed how perfect my every footfall was, how each step seemed so precise. It felt more intentional than what my fatigued mind should be capable of. It was here I noticed that I had become paranoid of my own stride. 
I worked again to quiet my mind. It was lost in these confusing thoughts that I noticed a form emerge from the smoke before me. It was the shape of a person, taller than my own stature. The silhouette in the fog was moving counterclockwise towards me, their black clothing bended almost perfectly into the sand. Grubgot. I did not recognize her language, but understood this as a greeting. I should have felt a reflex to flee in that moment, but this reflex never came. Now, only a few meters in front of me, the man came into focus before stopping. His suit and posture were that of a businessman, but with glowing far too worn and stained. His only sense of formality was coming from how he held himself with such confidence. It is good to see you. His accent was foreign and was thicker than the smoke that enshrouded us. Have we met? I asked in an unintentionally strange tone, the sound of my own voice surprising me. Hardly, but I'd like to, he replied, still beaming. Pardon, I replied, working to control my voice. We have hardly met, but I'd like to get to know each other. Proximity can be a powerful thing. I wondered what he meant by these words. May I walk alongside you? It'd be too far, uh, far too ironic to arrive alone. He had begun approaching me before finishing his sentence. You may. I spoke almost purely out of obligation. And so we descended clockwise, spiraling below. So it mentions the pit in the title. Okay, so no, it's worth it to not just rush. Uh, and that's the, the notes. I see. Because the foundation's carrying over. See? So many. One, two, triple... Quads? Whoa, we can go way tall. So, reaching the ceiling is the goal. I'm assuming we are in the pit. Essentially. It's kind of like naturally regurgitating food. Although it looks like it has a cap. Wake up. Eat. Reproduce. More blocks for the block machine. And I can zoom out. This is going to be a little helpful <laughs> pretty soon. So we should have good foundations. Ideally. I'm just going to put you there for the moment. I need more blocks to work with before I make a decision. Wake up! Nin. They're actually kind of cute. They're sleeping peacefully. Don't see if we drop one here. Nothing. It just disappears. So we got like a nice little horde going here. So the ones that are highlighted, they can give birth. Once they've given birth, that's it. You dump them into the grinder. Get them nice Tetris blocks. Wake up. Eat. Need more blocks. Okay. So let's see what we got here. Hmm. I'm gonna put you right there for a moment. Actually, no, this would be better. I can lock in the side over here a little. It's good foundation. So a lot of this playthrough is going to be jump skips. You're not going to want me to see me assemble every single block, I think. Oh, I'm just going to tip this over. You guys are going to be a lot of these blocks. Okay. No, these are both the same direction. I can plant you one here. All right. Okay. Drop you here. This one's gonna be a little risky to put here. But I think it's gonna kind of work. Hopefully. Okay. Drop one here. 
Everything's fitting in place. And I have a perfect spot for you, my friend. Or not. After some time traveling deeper, he spoke. You know where we are. I scrambled to assume whether this was a question or statement. Before I could come to a conclusion, he continued. With this terrible pit of tar and smoke. A sense of confusion, of wonder. I could feel him smiling behind me. Do you have any ideas of where what this place was, past or present? I was confident I had known moments ago. But this moment I was unsure. Enlightened me. Enlightened. He cackled. I turned, catching a glimpse of his grin. Well, I have an amusing hypothesis. But before I share with you my wayward thoughts, do you recall why you came here? A strange fear gripped me as he spoke those words. I remembered loss. I remembered something small that I could not carry any longer. I believed myself to have lost a child. I could feel the weight of it in my arms, but the specifics remained amorphous. These thoughts were so painful that I truly forgot the name the face of my own child. Again, I remembered their weight in my arms. I remembered breastfeeding and nurturing them, and I remembered... Shame. I remembered shame. No, I can't recall a thing. I said, the smothered emotions in my voice giving away my poor lie. What an unfortunate thing to lose. Well, I believe we have found ourselves at the site of a miracle. A biblical miracle, that. Responds so quickly with such ease. And I am not speaking metaphor or riddle. I am quite literal. I choose to believe this is the site of the Ziggurat of Babel. Well, the Tower of Babel now terribly decomposed. I barely absorbed this hypothesis, my mind still struggling to discern my own thoughts. I know you don't believe me. I did not respond, and the silence between us lasted what seemed like a small eternity. So what happened to that block I had? It was kind of weird, right? Like, it launched it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't move that. It's me and the grinder. Huh. They're red now. You guys not eat this? It was an eye that disappeared. Oh, it grew another one. Sweet. You put more of these out there right now. We got a good farm going here. We got a lot of blocks. Can I drop you guys here? This helps me like pull my thoughts a little better. So we need to start. Looks like things got bumped around a little bit just from the the game like reloading in. That kind of scares me. Can I? Can I push things back in a little better. It helped a little, not a ton. But we're getting slightly off-center. But it's still workable. It's still good. Push it back in. Yeah. Manly engineering. Firm it up. Firm up that tower. Yeah, there we go. That's, that's manly thinking. Okay. So I'm gonna put a square one right here. I think it's starting to rain. Interesting. Don't know if that has any effect on things. Put one right here. Actually, no. I know I need you. Right there. We have some other spots I can use you at. Oh no! It's pushing in. No, 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 no. Quick! Prepare it! Gotta be careful that launch the blocks. Firm everything up. Okay, everything should be firmed. So I should put my blocks over here. 
This is our best bet. So that way we're not launching blocks directly into the tower anymore. Alright, we got a real firmed up tower here. So I'm drop you there. The exhaust in my limbs grew crushing. I felt as if I could collapse at any moment. Yet still, my legs carried me as if they had made this journey a thousand times before. I raised my head and my eyes were drawn to nothing. There was no shape, no pattern before me. But still, my eyes and my vision were transfixed on a particular point of the smoke just ahead. I felt to explain the sensation I felt as from this nothing emerged the shape of a towering boulder of debris. A strange voice inside me felt I had willed this ruin into existence from the smoke itself. Behold, a fragment of battle. The man whispered to himself behind me. We approached the remnant of some vast structure. Its architecture that remained intact was perplexingly industrial. The black and swirling stone that comprised it appeared to have been cut at strange angles with a precision greater than that of any ancient culture. The spiral and stone interlocked more similarly to a puzzle or abstraction of art than any practical structure. Even this monolithic remnant seemed to desperately beg to collapse. Yet it stood with impressive resistance, its lack of weathering giving the impression it had recently been placed here, although I knew this not to be true. We rested beneath an overhang of this structure, slowly regaining our strength. Together nested here, we steered down into the endless smoke below, both carefully observing nothings within the haze. You believe me now? I spent no time discerning his intention. Is that a question? I asked. A moment of silence passed between us. Do you want to know why I came here? To this ruined tower? Before I could respond, he stood and spoke again. We stand here at the site of the greatest cooperation. A cooperation so grand that the divine stuck down out of contempt. Shouldn't be struck. Now, was it the goodness of men, the wealth of kings, that allowed this tower's construction? No, it was something far more beautiful than that. The language, the true language, the perfect language, the ability to express ideas to others as they exist within your very head. Our inability to communicate is what keeps us separate. It keeps our memories from truly being shared. We are a consciousness of cells that deny the beauty our components possess. With perfect communication, there is no barrier between you and me. There is no misunderstanding, no need for lies or confusion. There is no self. How else could this stone tangle so elegantly, organically, remain so robust? The work of countless brilliant organisms? This was the work of a lost organism. The organism made in our God's image. Humanity. We were denied the structure, the form, but here among these ruins we will understand each other again. In fact, we already are. Listen close. Even our accents have melted away. He turned to me, his monologue concluding, and his gaze locked with mine. You think I lie, he said, full of fading passion. Oh, the, uh... Wait, what? Oh my god! They've eaten my... Why did you get a block out of it? But do they breed? You know, my little guys. I think one just came out of the spawn pool, didn't it? I really don't get the point of these guys in comparison. I'll just put you away. No, I didn't get one. It just it just eats my stuff. Oh, I see. They spawn. They come out of the ooze. No matter what, you get something out of the primordial goo. 
So it's just basically a pest I have to, like, tame. See, here comes another one. Everyone run to this side! Can I just keep you over here? Because if I kill you, and this another one's just gonna spawn. Speaking of which, need some blocks. Alright, well, it's time to start building. Running right this way, while not giving us much height, does give us relatively very stable foundational pieces. Because it's much harder to knock these loose. Because they're running this way, see what I mean? Okay, so pretty much it's gonna be the same thing. I'm gonna be doing this. Uh. A little bit of a uh, harvesting of blocks, and then when I got enough, I'm just pretty much just gonna build it. Okay, reach the next level. No, I... Well then, you wish to know the truth. He coming off sharply. His inflection changed, clearly feigning emotion. It's a tragic story. I lost something very important to me. I lost my baby. My wee little lad. Stop it. I said coldly. Refused. I can't remember his face or his name, but I can remember him suckling from my tit. Shut up! I shouted. And now I'm just all full of shit. Shut up! I screamed, now standing and enraged. I grabbed his chest and shoved him back, sending him tumbling out of our temporary rest site. As soon as he recovered to his feet, he charged back up the hill towards me. I struck him in the head with as much force as I could muster before he grappled me, pressing and holding me still. Unable to struggle free from him, he spoke to me through his teeth. So much emotion. But you fail even to observe your own anatomy. Let me remind you. As he released me from his grapple, he tore my loose-fitting shirt up and over my head, before retreating back and away from my flailing body. Look, you could never have breastfed any child let alone on your own. You are a man, deeply confused by memories that have drifted into your head. Although I was seething, for a moment I shook down and was shocked to see my own body feel to align even slightly with my remembered self. That child was never yours. That memory you are clothing so closely, so clearly, is that of this place. Of some woman beneath these sands. A maelstrom of emotions swirled within me. The unclear images of children, family, and lovers that have plagued my mind came into focus. Incompatible memories of men, women, beauty, and loss. Who was I in the sea? In whose body did I stand in this moment? As a tightness constricted in my throat and heat built within my chest, I collapsed to my knees, mourning the lives I never lived. I curled into a ball and cried, tears of my hundred strangers. You believe me now? Okay. Got a new, uh... First off, let's get a view. Grind those up. And let's plan a new one of these. They're almost like, uh, it was eels, the, uh, the ones that, like, live in the ocean and they live in the sand. I forgot what they call those. Anyway, let's look, look at our tower. So we are at tier four. There is tier five, and there's weird stuff flying in the sky. And then there's the final tier, which is when we reach the ceiling. I don't know if these are going to knock my stuff off. I would think it's impossible to do, but you never know. The next tier is going to be a pretty big gap, and then the one after that is actually kind of small. This is going to be the biggest gap of tiers yet. Due to things spawning together, it looks like... 
Things are getting a little rough on the tower. I need to reinforce it a bit. Which I gotta be a little careful. A little bit right there. Right there. Okay. A very firm tower. I'm not sure you're supposed to be playing the game like this, but here I am. Alright, give me my... Give me my blocks. The meat. So I'm gonna do it. I'm just gonna pile them over here. Here of you. So we have plenty of blocks to work with. Plan my ascent up. This is looking like it needs some reinforcement. The left side's always been a little bit funny. These long blocks are great reinforcing. As you can see. Oh, we need some weight right now. That's the big problem over there. And what I can do is I can weigh you in. Make you kind of lean to the right that way. I need like long blocks running sideways. Like this. And now kind of hold things together. Per se if I do that right. The long blocks in the middle though aren't too bad. I can like abuse that a little bit. To kind of gain some quick height. I feel like the dev like imagine people like Take a shortcuts. Like, you don't need a perfect tower. There, really, there's no reason not to have gaps. Like, just get up there fast enough as long as your your weight distribution is fine. But, like, I'm building a pretty tower here. The prettiest tower in the land. You are exactly what I needed. First off, from that up. My square block. Perfect. Exactly what I need, actually. Put you right there. Okay. Here is what I want to do. This is really going to give me a lot of stability right there. And then... Yeah. Yeah, sweet. Sweet. Get a little closer. There we go. Now I need to lock you in the corner more, which is what we use this for right here, bring that way, that'll like lock that side in a bit. It's a good step forward, and I'm gonna put some of you in the meat grinder, because you're useless to me now. No, you're useful, so it's meat. Great, great, perfect. <laughs> okay, this is a piece I needed. Sweet. Firm it up over. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be careful. Okay. Hard to firm it up because that's that's the point I need to firm up right now. I just need to get some weight distributed here and we'll be fine. Go away. Okay. Almost. Here, I'm going to build this with a real clean foundation now. With all these square blocks I have sitting around. You see this? It's a very clean tower. We're in a very clean ship here. Cool. And I'm going to spawn, because I think you all reset. I'm going to make a bunch of blocks here. Because the blocks don't reset, but you guys do. This will give me a good... Starter. So when I need to start building my next set. Move you out of the way. Okay. Let's go. There we are. Number five. I recalled leaving that place a hundred times. I recalled a thousand steps by different feet. The downward spiral had tightened. The smoke had become so heavy and viscous at times I felt I could have swam through it if I was granted the appropriate anatomy. The man walked ahead of me now. He had for some time. We had spoken a little as we descended. Our communication had grown abstract. 
it often being unclear who was the speaker at any given moment. Even in some moments, there was no speaker, only language. You are afraid. Beneath this earth will I dream. Will I know how this ends? Amnesia is a small death. What is memory but the measurement of life? Is to share memory not to extend one's own life? Are there perhaps shapes, recursive and fractal, that emerge from life that only can be examined when viewing many lives? Do these shapes harbor greater truth, divinity, or the absence of it? If the mind is in the image of God, what image do we now take? The mind drifted in out of the sea of sounds, each resembling a voice and form, but only being understandable in great quantities. Like the grains and sand individually, we were solid and unique, but as a structure, we took on properties that could only be approximately as fluid. As we made our final descent, this tide of minds was what controlled us. Alright, just need to reach the top. Okay, no, they didn't reset it this time, thankfully. Hey. Uh oh, they broke my machine. Good thing I made a bunch of blocks when I had the chance. I see what they want you to do. They want you to cannibalize your own blocks. Let's see, we may have enough to make... We might have enough to make a straight tower if we wanted to. Let's try something. My perfect blocks! We just need to reach the top. So we need to narrow our tower. Right? Now these... can interlock to one block if we do this right. It's a, it's a real good thing, like I said, that I thought about having a, a store of blocks ahead of time. <laughs> and I'm also lucky I had so many squares. So we have two squares here. Just need to make a giant tower. And then we can pull some from some of the other sides here, if needed. Almost there. I'm trying to feel like where I can cannibalize something. I can't cannibalize that. I got pieces here I can use. It reached it. Just need to... There. I think that's the game. At last they were before me, yet I did not recall them coming into my vision. The bottom of the pit, a churning place of black sand ever submerging a familiar spiral. I felt decades older, and in a way perhaps I was. It felt strange to step underground that lacked such an unforgiving incline. The man passed me, moving knee deep into the swirling sand. He began eagerly removing his clothing. Once released, the clothing swirled around the pit before being sucked effortlessly below the surface. I had seated myself on one of the few articles of debris, legs dipped into warm, oily sand. I could feel the thousands of faces of those already beneath the surface. They seemed focused on me, and perhaps that was the last remnant of my individual demanding I be special. There was a strange clarity in this place, like the air in the eye of the storm. I did not recognize my own memories here, but I recognized those that were not. You hesitate, the man spoke awkwardly using his dejected vocal cords. I felt my throat peel open as I chose to respond. Perhaps I... Someday, I will wish to be alone again. You remain lesser. Even if you were to flee, you would not be but a bundle of convicted memories, unsure of your age, your wants and needs. We are in the image of good. I cut the man off as he submerged waist deep into the tar and sand. I don't want to become God or divine or closer to his image. Maybe I'm content being just a man. As his upper chest submerged, he turned to face me, his facial muscles maintaining composure through great effort. I shouted through the smoke. Then what do you want? Why come here? Why join these people? Why become just a cell in the organism? His final pained smile was communicated only through his eyes before he slipped beneath the surface. In a deafening silence that followed, he wordlessly spoke. 
I don't want to be God. I just want to be a little better than this. Now what? The end of the game? The tower is once more bewildered in existence, and thus once more will collapse. A piece of you, however small, has become a part of this place. If you wish to be given a name or others to remember, send an image of this code below to its max. <laughs> okay. Rename etched into this final tower for all to see. It's interesting credits. Everyone's just chilling down there. Those are the rotters. Uro Uro. Dola. Secret rotter. The grinder. Is the tower gonna collapse once this reaches the top? Is this gonna knock it over? I guess that's the end of the game. Cool. There's so many of you down here and they're all so hungry. We can go taller. Yes. Well, now that we've reached the top, we might as well have our fun. Let's knock it over. Hmm, we need to pull out lower piece. God, I made this tower so strong and it's taking a long time to tip over. No, it is holding. I have taken core pieces away and it is holding just fine. There we go. Now let's see. It is still taking a while to hold. There it goes. Come on. There is the tower. That's what we want to see. So that's it for the Pit of Babel. Interesting game. I, For me to understand the storyline, I'd have to kind of go back and kind of look at what it's kind of representing. You could take it literal, and you could take it as some of a biblical story of uh, wanting to be merged with the others and everything, and connection, and the nature of the organism, and all that stuff. I have no idea what it has to do with the rotters and them. Or there could be a symbolism behind it. But since I was so focused on the puzzle aspect, I'm not able to like fully absorb the storyline without almost watching my own recording. So I'm sure some people will interpret it in the comments and kind of put together from watching this. I think you I think you could take this as a literal story. I think it's possible too. That's why I said I'm there could be symbolism there, but I, I think I think there is room to take this as a literal story. Now, as a puzzle game, it's a tower builder. There is not too much that punishes you there. So as you can see like I built the perfect tower all the way up. Very smoothly nothing happened wrong. So it's, I feel like it's mainly relying on its visuals and some of its atmosphere in that sense. It is a game jam game, actually. Although an interesting one, nonetheless. But gameplay-wise, there's nothing too much special. Like I said, it is just a tower builder. If you take the game as a whole, with the, the kind of odd storyline and the, the atmosphere and the style, that kind of boosts us up a bit. But as a singular product, I would say both developers have done some more fun or interesting projects on their own. But this is a unique enough game where I enjoyed it for the artistic sense more so than the game sense. I, I guess that's how I would describe it. Anyway, so thank you all for watching play Pit of Babel. I'll see you guys later, and take it easy.